Are we doing the? Yeah, baby. Are we doing five each? Uh, uh, we'll just see how much time we got. I, got. I can't narrow it down to five. There's too many good things coming out. I got new tattoos today, peeps. That's Yzma as a cat and Zero from Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't know whether or not this is a board games and brew, but I am drinking some iced coffee and Jeff is uh, getting into a little bit of Red Bull. Jamie likes when I have Red Bull before we I film. I do, this. because it makes them I all get a little bit more pep. A little bit more peppy. I'm sure it's great for the heart. To foster the meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. Exactly. Guess what? What? We're here today to talk about Gen Con. Exactly. Guess who's going to Gen Con? That's what I was just gonna say. Special Jack's announcement. Coming. I am now going to Gen Con. I was already going. I don't know. I, I'm excited, but I'm also extremely nervous because mm -hmm. I've mentioned on this channel before that that amount of people is going to be a struggle for me. It's a lot of people. But we're gonna do it. A lot of you people. Um, I don't fun. know if I'm allowed to say what I'm doing, so I'm not going to. Right. Um, but uh, I will be there, pseudo working. Pseudo hanging out. Pseudo hanging out. Pseudo playing some games. Pseudo playing some games. And I will be there working. I'm gonna be working with Third World Studios, who are doing the game Stuff of Legend, uh, Charcuterie, mm -hmm. and Mission Control. Now, because we're both going to Gen Con, obviously we hyped. We're getting hyped for it. And what comes along with Gen Con? One billion games that you can either purchase or demo or whatever. Mm. And so today's video is all about the games that we are the most excited for. With a few caveats. I haven't put anything on my list that has already been released. So there might be stuff that we're excited for that you can already get like so I, th I I think I took mo I some of these I don't know if they're already out or not so that's one caveat and if I say something you're like that is already out well then I just didn't know number two um if we know or if I I this I'm talking about myself if I knew that we were going to be getting this game to cover it in the future I left it off the list so I have a million things on my list I don't know what Jeff has so we're gonna go through these relatively quickly because I do want to cover most of them. Uh, I just want to quickly mention Mist Wind from First Fish Games, uh, which is designed by Daryl Andrews, mm -hmm. who is a friend of the show, channel, mm -hmm. fellow Canadian, mm -hmm. who we love very much. So I just want to show that one out. I'm not, I haven't seen it. Uh, interested to check it out if I get the chance to while I'm there. Um, second one is Last Light, which is Roy Kennedy's game. Oh, yeah. Um, which he's had at conventions and stuff, and some people have gotten a chance to play it. I haven't seen it or had a chance to play it, and it's one, uh, I've heard some people chat about it more recently that I'm, I'm now interested in checking it out. Uh, kind of a 4X game in an hour or less, which sounds really cool. Yeah. The first game that I wanted to mention is called Junk Drawer. I know how to say drawer, drawer, exactly. This is from 25th Century Games. It is a game for one to four players and it is going to be for sale. And what it says is organize that messy junk drawer to score the most points in this tile laying game. Maybe it is junk drawer. Junk drawer. How do you spell drawer? Junk drawer. It's, there is a different infliction between drawer and drawer. But what is it? It's a tile laying game, so you're not drawing. It must be drawer then. But it's weird because it's junk drawer with a piece of paper and a pen. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a tile placement game about organizing your junk drawer. And I don't know if anybody it's plays be junk drawer. Switch, but there's a game called, I think it's called To the Left, where mm. that's basically what you're doing. You're just organizing like your junk drawers and stuff, and it's super fun. Anyways, it says MSRP is $40, so relatively like accessible American pricing. Dollars American dollars. For our Canadian Eesh. friends. Eesh. Uh, so a billion dollars Canadian. It says bingo, grid coverage, puzzle, sign me up. The first one up for me is from Arcane Wonders, and that is called Dubious. Dubious. So this one initially drew me in because of the cover. It's got like a masquerade ball, um, Mm -hmm. mask it just looks really cool but it says so doubt about your identity while guessing who's who 
we've had a lot of fun playing deduction games yeah, recently. Big time. The one caveat with this is that it's three to six player count, mm. uh, which is tough, but we have a gaming group now. So um, these group. ones these ones normally be ones we, in the past we'd be like, ah, eh, well, three player count, not much we can do about it. But we have a player count now. And yeah. I'm really super into uh, deduction games. And this one looks really cool. It's kind of like Sherlock's Sherlock dress mm -hmm. with a masquerade ball hat and a little lighter. It looks really cool. It looks kind of dark and maybe a bit spooky, but yeah. it says role-playing, storytelling, card game, and deduction. The next one on my list is called Agree to Disagree, and this is from Adam's Apple Games, and Adam's Apple Games is those who brought Planet us Planet Unknown. Unknown, so mm. I have high hopes. Mm -hmm. It's a party game for two to eight players. It will be on sale for $25, um, and it says a party... A party game that makes it fun to disagree. Next one up on my list is from Blue Orange Games, and it is called Mech a Dream. Let's Mech a Dream. Um, it does say 2023, so I don't know. Maybe this is already out. Doesn't matter. Don't care. Um, it's one I'm excited to check out because I haven't heard anything about it until I saw it on this list. Manage time and resources to build machines in order to make your robot dream. You got a Mech a Dream. Blue Orange Games are, in my opinion, some of the best, like, Lightweight. Easy, lightweight games to play with a little bit of like crunch to it, and they've always been super enjoyable when we've played them. Maybe you can even make a drum. Yeah, it's fun to say. All right, the next one on my list is from Aporta Games, and they're going to be demoing this, um, and its release date is October 5th. So, I mean, in my opinion, they should just sell it, but I guess I don't run the show. Maybe they don't have it yet. Maybe they don't have it yet, but they're going to be demoing it. It's called House of Cats. You mentioned this one before, I feel like, didn't have you? I? I don't remember. I we talked about this maybe on a Kickstarter. It's for one to six players, and it says, fill your home with rooms, cats, and mice, and there's a roll and write game. There's I nothing that I don't love game. about that. Roll and write, love it. You could play it solo, perfect. 15 to 20 minutes, love to see it. Yep. Cats, mice. Building rooms. Mm. Yeah, I want that. Yep. Next one up for me is probably no shocker to anyone. It's Overboss Duel. Ooh, that's on my list too. So Overboss Duel is a two-player version, two-player only version of Overboss. Mm -hmm. However, we've played, we only have played Overboss. No, that's not true. We played it three, I think. Have we played it four? I don't know, actually. We primarily play normal Overboss at two-player. Yes. Uh, I don't know a ton about how Overboss Duel changes things up for two-player, uh, but excited to check it out. We love Brotherwise games, and usually it's a big hit around here, so um, one we're looking forward to seeing more about. Yeah, I think that it has like a, a board that like folds out, and you're building on the same board. Mm, that it might be like sense. an area majority that type of thing. Sense, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Um, the next one on my list is one from Blue Orange, and that is called Moon River, brought to us by Bruno Cathala and Johan Servals. Survey? I don't know how to pronounce it. Johan. Survey. 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 And this is for two to four players. Uh, it does have an MSRP, which leads me to believe that it will be on sale. Um, but it says, build your own King Domino-like tile so this mm. is this feels it's gonna have a king domino feel with the dominoes that's what i've read about it bruno cathala is the designer of king domino and so i am excited because you all know that we love king domino bruno cathala is a fantastic designer we love blue orange so win win win, win, win. win. yeah next up for me is from capstone games one of my favorite publishers uh and it's called age of innovation and I believe it's like the next iteration in the Terra Mystica Ooh. universe. Uh, I have not played Terra Mystica, but I do really love Guy Project. And I don't know a ton about this game other than the fact that it's from Capstone, who I love, and it's in that world. Um, but it says terraform the world to expand your faction and create innovations on the way. So it seems like maybe kind of like a Civ themed uh, Terra Mystica type game. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, anytime Capstone puts out a game, uh, I'm super interested in it. So it's one I'm looking forward to checking out while I'm there. My next one is from a new to me publisher. It's from Class Castle Clark, not Classel Clark. Castle Clark LLC. Uh, this is called Haunted Halloween, the trick or treat game. This is a 2024 release, so they are just demoing it here at Gen Con. Uh, two to four players, and it says, survive the ghost gauntlet and trick-or-treat a haunted neighborhood. 
I'm sorry. What's that? The perfect game for me? For spooky season? Don't mind if I do. That's all I know about it. It's super bright, colorful, and it looks fun. And it looks like a uh, pumpkins. Like, I need this in my life. It I'm very like excited to check it out. All right, next up for me, I know is on Jamie's list as well. Oh. And that is Nocturne from Flat Out Games. The box cover of this is a fox in Meiji looking magic gear with a bunch of like lights around him in a forest. It's from Best, Best Sobel Art. You got me right away. You got me right away with the best old sure it. Nocturne is a puzzly spatial bidding and set collection game of Sly Mystic set in a whimsical moonlit forest illustrated by Beth Sobel. Sold. Puzzles? Yes. Foxes? Yes. Beth Sobel? Yes. Lights in a forest? Yes. Mage Fox? Yes. Need I say more? Yes to everything. The next one on my list is called Queen by Midnight, and this is from Darrington Press. Uh, it is releasing August 2023, so I assume it's actually going to be like a Gen Con release. Uh, it's for three to six players, and it says six princesses battle for the right of the Midnight Court. Mm. Um, so I want it. That's all I know about it. It's deck, bag, and pool building, variable player powers card game, I believe. When I was looking at it, it's kind of like a dueling type of game, mm -hmm. but three to six players. Yep. So it sounds really interesting. Yeah. So I'm I'm here for it, and I really like the cover art too. Next up for me is from Game Right, and it is Forbidden Jungle. And Jamie is telling me this is part of the Forbidden Island series of games, mm -hmm. none of which I've played. Mm -hmm. They're like great intro games. Move through a shifting jungle in search of a portal toward home. Ooh. It sounds like Subterra with a little bit more of a jungly theme to it. Mm. But I like that little like puzzly ghetto you know, maze, maze-esque yeah. type game, like Subterra, even though you say I hate it. I think you might. <laughs> the next one on my list is called Wild Tiled West. And this is from Dire Wolf, who you may know as the makers of Clank and Dune Imperium. Uh, and it's also designed by the designer of Dune Imperium, Paul Denon. And uh, it says release 2023. I assume this will be for sale at Gen Con. One to five players, closed drafting, dice rolling, American West animals, build, mine, tussle, wrangle. It looks really good. This sounds like a game that is things that you love and things that I love I didn't come put it on, together. I didn't put it on my list, but it does look really good. Yeah, I'm really excited. And I didn't know it was done by the guy that did. Uh... Yeah, and that's why I'm excited because... He does good games. Mm -hmm. We love it. And it looks just really fun and cute, so I'm here for it. All right, next up for me, I think, is also on Jamie's list, and that is Weirdwood Manor yes, it from is. Grey Ridge Games. Um, Weirdwood Manor, it says, work together to battle time and malevolent monsters in a magical, ever-shifting manor. It seems like a really cute, like... Creepy. Hor like, cute horror? Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, spoopy. I don't really know much about anything about this, but like we've been getting into more co-op games, so this looks like one that we could get into. Mm -hmm. The weight on it actually I know, I was just seems at that. weird. Yeah, it looks weird like wood. it looks like a cute little like puzzly game, but then the weight on it's three point five out of five. Weirwood Manor is a cooperative board game that marries great adventure gameplay with some Euro inspired underpinnings as you and your group of valiant companions battle protect Weirdwood Manor and its en enigmatic ruler Lady Weirdwood. From an invading fey monster and his clockwork scarab minions. <gasps> that sounds really cool. This game is huge. Yeah, it's big. And colorful. Ooh, that was cool. Oh, Go back. it is cute. That's a scarab. I'm obsessed like with that. this game. Yeah. I am obsessed, 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 obsessed. Oh, okay. The next one on my list is from Floodgate Games, designed by Nathan Thor Thornton, I always pronounce that wrong, Thornton, who is the designer of Fun Facts and Medium, so mm -hmm. another fun party game called Everything Ever. It's for three to ten players. It will be on sale at Gen Con. Party game you've been preparing for your whole life. What does that mean? I don't know, but I want it because his games are so yeah. much fun. He does, not Fun Facts, he does Green Team Wins. Mm -hmm. He does Green Team Wins and Medium, and Green Team, win, green team Wins 
was just such a smash hit for a party game. So I, I am also very good. medium is also very good. So I've got very high hopes and uh, I can see us getting this one at Gen Con and playing it there. Like I feel like a lot of people will probably mm. end up playing this game at Gen yeah. Con. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get games, I think. I've never been to Gen Con, but apparently it's like a swarm. Yeah, scary. So we'll see. Next scary. up from me is a game I've already talked about on the channel uh, during a pumped up Kickstarter. Uh, and that is Galactic Cruise mm -hmm. from Kinson Key Games. This probably is the one I'm most excited for. Mm. Just in terms of like something I hadn't heard about before. I've never heard of the publisher, but it has Eno to art. And the theme uh, really resonates with me. But um, Hello and welcome to Galactic Cruise. Here we offer our guests something special. The comfort of a luxury cruise with the innovation of space travel. As the first company to offer extended stay, space vacations, we are excited to have you working for us. That theme is something I absolutely love. It sounds like, like kind of like Wall-E, but less dystopian, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm super excited for it. I mean, it's it's got Eno Two art. It looks awesome. The box looks incredible. Um, but I'm very very excited to check it out. I just assume that they will be demoing this and not selling it because this was released yeah, in 2024. Like, yeah, oh, that's your, yeah. All right, the next one on my list is from Funny Fox. What a funny little fox. And it's called Natu Nautilus. Nautilus. <laughs> Nautilus. It's called Nautilus oh, Island. Oh boy. It's for two to four players and it is being demoed at Gen Con. You are shipwrecked, escaping a mysterious and deserted volcanic island. It just looks really, really bright, colorful. I'm into it. I've never heard of this publisher. I don't know. Actually, this designer, uh, Theo Riviere, sounds very familiar. Click on it. It'll show you. Draftosaurus. The loop. Sea salt and paper. <gasps> this guy's a genius. Yeah. All right, that's going to be a great game mm -hmm. because that guy's a great designer. Mm -hmm. So that's my next one. It just looks super pretty. Endgame bonuses, race, card game, exploration. Yes. I don't know if we mentioned it. It's Theo Riviere. Riviere. That's not Theo Riviere. But I don't know if I said it right. Yeah. The next one on my list, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about. I'm just going to flag it and then Jamie can talk about it because I basically put it on my list for Jamie. And that is probably, I think, would be Jamie's possibly most um, highest anticipated game from Gen Con. And that is Elia and Something Shiny from North Star Games. Ela and Something Shiny. I will talk about this now too because this is my most anticipated game. I recently was watching somebody's video. I don't remember whose it was, but it was about solo games and they were talking about this game. Uh, it came out in like 2021, 2022 ish, mm -hmm. depending on like fulfillment. You can't get this game anywhere. Trust me. I've looked and I want it so desperately bad. It is just adorable little bunny and um it says you're basically it's like a choose your own adventure and kind of like a solo a, game a solo like almost like a role-playing game adventure game and the artwork looks really cute it just looks so adorable and i my heart will be broken if i do not get this game at gen con is this a reprint then i think it is mm -hmm. yeah i think it is so i saw it and i was me like yep oh, that's that's jamie's game want it want it want it okay so the next one on my list is called Horticulture. This is from Last Night Games, and it's for one to ten players. <sighs> oh, that's a big number. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I feel like it's... Oh, it, I think it might be like a roll and write type I don't game. think I've ever seen one to ten. One to ten. It's like... Just put any. <laughs> whatever. Just put whatever. Um, so this one, actually, it says it came out May of 2023, so I just haven't heard of it or seen it, so I'll, mm. whatever, I'll leave it on my list. It says, plan your own garden, score points for planting according to your plan. You're planning your garden, and then you're executing it for one to ten players. Mm -hmm. Garden for one to ten people. I, I only have uh, one more, and I'm going to bulk, well, I have two more, but I'm going to bulk them into one. Sure. Um, and I know they're on your list as well. Uh, it's the new Unmatched. So yes. um, there's the Unmatched Tales to Amaze, which is the campaign, campaign version of Unmatched, the cooperative Unmatched version, mm -hmm. which has already been announced. That one excites me less than just the normal Unmatched system. Mm -hmm. The normal Unmatched series, which is Brains and Brawn, which is Spider-Man, Spider uh, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, She-Hulk. She -Hulk. Yeah. Um, again, just more unmatched for us to check out. You know, we love unmatched. Um, 
I'm excited for those two. Those were on my list. So now I don't have to talk about them. But that's it for me. I'm done. I'm not done. Let's do rapid fire. Okay, the next one on my list is called Forest Shuffle. There's a, it's from Lookout Games, and there's a fox on the cover. It will be demoed at Gen Con. Build your very own forest in this clever card game for str strategists. If there's a fox on the cover, you just immediately sell Sold. Immediately Is sold. fox your favorite animal? Yes. Is it? Yes. It's a card game. Mm. And we love card games. So I'm here for it. So that's that one. Cosmoctopus from Lucky Duck Games. I got to get my hands on this game. It looks mm -hmm. so freaking cute. There's like this little like, like cosmic octopus. It's Henry Audubon. Henry Audubon. Yes, he did. Parks? Nope. Yes, Parks. Yes, he did Parks, Designer Parks. Anyways, it says, earn tentacles to prove your devotion to the cutest cephalopod in the cosmos. <laughs> it is a very cute cephalopod. Consider it sold. Next one on my list is, how do you say it? I don't know if that Y is silent or not. Naros, but yeah. it starts with a Y. Naros Fallen. And this is from Peakwick Dreams, one to four players. Uh, and it's going to be demoed. And it says, explore the land and raise your shadow to conquer the magical forces of Naros. Um, I have never heard of this publisher, but I clicked on it and I was like looking through the pictures and I don't know. Oh. It just, it just feels, Those something about it just feels so colorful and bright and fun. Jamie is drawn to very colorful, bright, uh, bubbly art. Yes. Cute. Ooh, Jeff, look how cute. Pinks and purples. Dices. It looks very good. It looks very good. And that's... I like when there's vibrancy of color. Mm hmm I do. I Trust me, I love my beige, you know, Euro game. I love me exactly. some nice war game, but something about vibrancy of color on a table. Mm-hmm. I'm on, I'm on board. That'll do it. The next one on my list is called The Search for Lost Species, and this is from Renegade Games. For one mm -hmm. to four players, should be on sale because it releases in August. Search for the Lost Species in a deduction game follow-up to The Search for Planet X. Oh, so it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like Search for Planet X, but like... Animals. Animals. Mm -hmm. So better. Yeah. Because animals are better than space. Mm -hmm. We both think that. The next one on my list is called Redwood. God, you love nature themes. I do. I love nature themes. And this is from Sit Down. One to four players. Uh, it says it's releasing in September. My assumption is that they will probably be selling it as an early release. Step into the shoes of wildlife photographers. I'm going so many on theme games. alone. So it's kind of like a uh, very parks vibe though, because you're a photographer when you're hiking along. That's exact. Parks. I was like, it seems like they pulled the photograph mechanic from yeah. parks and Medellin. Line right. of sight, movement, animals, environment. I love to see it. I didn't mention Boo, but because we're getting it. Yeah, that we one, already have a pre-order. That one looks really you don't cool. Don't worry about it. Although I do still think they missed out on Spooky Boopy. This but... one looks really good. Yeah. I didn't include it on my list, but I figured you would. Yeah, this one is called The Stifling Dark, and it's coming from Sophisticated Cerebus. Cerberus. Cerber. Nope. Cerberus. Yep. Cerebit. Cer Cerberus. It is the three-headed dog from the ah, Greek myth. Fluffy. Sophisticated Cerber... Cer Do you just say it for me? Cerberus. Games. Use your flashlight's abilities and teammates to escape from the adversary. Ooh. Deduction, hidden movement, deduction. Again. <laughs> Two deductions. <laughs> Two deductions. And horror. It looks very good. It looks like a fantastic spooky season it does. game. I'm yeah. here for it. All right. Last one for me is one that I just don't know what to think about. Mm. Okay, so I don't know anything, but it's a Halloween, aka like the movie Halloween based board game. Sometimes when you get these IP type themes, you just don't know what to expect. But yeah, I always worry <laughs> when they paste, not paste, when they use an IP, it's like, are they using the IP because there's not much yeah. game there, which but, isn't fair, but yeah. I think a lot of the time that is the case. So this is what is intriguing me. Number one, it's Halloween spooky season. Mm. We love to see it. It's from Trick or Treat Studios. It's for two to four players. Um, it is, I think, going to be for sale there. But somebody is, you play as Michael Myers and stalk the other players in a hidden movement game. See, I like that. I love that's, that. That's like mind MGMT, mind management. Like yeah. uh, when I get to play as the person mm -hmm. trying to get out. I just really, really hope 
that they execute it well. Because mm -hmm. if they do, that would be such a fun game. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm excited for it. That's Halloween. And I think there's a... This whole company just has, like, Halloween games, which I don't... I'm ex oh, did you see that? I did see that, but I just... Uh, we talked we about it. We just talked about it. But yeah. Four Horsemen is p uh, potentially I did also there. see that. Okay, I'll mention it. <laughs> I, I purposely didn't include this one because... I think it's out already. We, we might be doing some content on... Uh, I don't know if this game is in that WizKids world, but we might be doing some content on the Star Trek games that WizKids have. Um, Did I know that? Anyway, um, there's a chance we might be covering some Star Trek stuff for WizKids, so I didn't purposely mention this. But I'll throw it out since Jamie stopped on it. Um, they are going to have Star Trek Discovery Black Alert from WizKids. I'm a huge Star Trek Next Generation lover, and so I feel like Star Trek is an IP that doesn't get enough love. But again, I understand it's super niche. This one, I think, is like... I don't know if what... Star Trek it's based off of, but basically it's like the USS Discovery must escape the mirror universe before being captured. I love Star Trek. So. Jeff loves Star Trek. I'm definitely, like, if they have it there, I'm probably going to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't see a, a way around situation it. where I will. Okay, I lied. I actually did have one last one, which I can't remember if I already talked about at the beginning, but it's called Kelp. You didn't. Kelp is from Wonderbow Games, and it is a head-to-head -head battle between an octopus and a shark. Yeah, all right, that's What's cool. What's not to love about that? One person plays the octopus, one, and it says it's a battle of wits. Area I like movement, the mechanisms. Deck, yeah. bag, pool building, animals, and bluffing. Yeah. I am so here for it. It says 2-2, two, two, so I don't know if it means like it's either two-player or 2-2. I think two, it's two. only two-player. <sighs> Which would make sense. It's like head-to-head -head battle would be two player. An octopus versus a shark. Who would win? Who would win? Octopus. Octopus could just be slapping you around, but a shark can literally would. bite an nah, octopus I think, in half. What what type of octopus? Like, are we talking a big? I feel like if it's size equality of a shark and an octopus, like same size octopus, same size shark, I'm going octopus. Really? I think so. I that thing could just like. You're no, done. But a shark just, you're done. No, but like, how is a shark going to bite you on the side? It can just wrap around the side of a shark. No problem. Just squeeze it. But see, the problem is like, how does the octopus then kill the shark? Squeeze it. I don't know. It could cover up its gills and suffocate it. That's dark. Oh. Anyways, I'm really excited for that game. It's called Kelp. Mm -hmm. Those are... Many. I was going to say some of the games. Those are many of the games that we are looking forward to at Gen Con. I will post this link below. It's from Board Game Geek. It lists um, all the publishers are able to go in and post the games that they're bringing. Guaranteed, this game is going, or this list is going to expand. Yeah, this before. is a list of like what was available to us knowledge wise as of the time of filming. There exactly. will be stuff added to it that I'm sure we would be super into. We just don't have the information. Coach McGoats. Anyways, we would love to know down below a few things. Are you coming to Gen Con? Are you? What are you excited for? We would love to know. But that's everything that we have for today. Now, if you're interested in buying board games, the many that we mentioned today will be available someday mm -hmm. at your friendly local gaming store. So you should go check that out. Ours is... Boardroom Game Cafe. Heck yeah, it is. Do you like snacks? I do. Perfect. Where should they get them? Munch pack. Munch pack. Snacks from around the world. You love to see it. ATW. ATW. That's everything that we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. Now we say goodbye. Goodbye! Later days. Totally. It was better than like, remember university when people used to drink vodka Red Bulls? Red Bulls. Um, Red Bulls. When I was in university, my drink of choice. Zero hangover. Water. Was vodka. Blue Powerade. Mm -hmm. Red Bull. And vodka. That sounds awful. Possibly going Ew. to be on sale. What? Ew, what is that? A dead ear week. Was it dead before you flicked it? No. Powerful flick. It was. <laughs> you just crushed his skull. Oh, no, I must have closed it. The decisions you make and things to be efficient about and not efficient about make no sense to me. Oh, no. It's not dead. He <gasps> was baking it. You stunned it.
Ugh. Your wigs are disgusting. Disgusto. Not today. <laughs> Boom, you did. It sounds a little bit like Abyss. Mm. Not Abyss. Um, Terra. Uh, what's that game you always say I hate? That I've wanted. Sub Terra. Um, Weirdwood Man Weirdwood Manor is coming. <coughs> oh, the Pumpkin Kickstarter hasn't come out yet. Will it be out before this one? Okay. You all good? Your eyes are water. I do not. On my spit. Yeah. <coughs> I hate when that happens.